Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to have a look at the anatomy of the internal carotid artery. We're going to follow its course all the way through the neck, through the skull base and into the cerebrum. And then we're going to have a closer look at the artery itself, define the various segments of the artery and look at the branches that come off each of those segments. So I'm going to start by having a look at a CT scan here where we're just going to get a broad overview of how the carotid runs all the way up into the circle of Willis. And then we're going to go on to an MR angiogram where we can look at the anatomy of the carotid in much more detail. So here we have an axial contrasted arterial phase CT. I want to scroll right down in the chest. We're going to start at the heart and work our way all the way up. So we can follow the trachea down. It should bifurcate here at the carina. Here we know we can see our pulmonary trunk here our ascending aorta and our descending aorta. And as we work our way up, we'll see the arch of the aorta starting to form. Now we know that there are three branches that come off the aorta. Here we can see one, two, three. So let's name them. So our brachiocephalic trunk, our left common carotid. Now there's no such thing as a carotid artery. It's either common carotid or internal or external car carotid artery. And then our left subclavian. So let's just check that this is our left subclavian. We should see it going out towards the periphery. That's right. As we come down then, we can see our left subclavian, then we know that this is our left common carotid artery. So let's follow the left common carotid all the way up. We're just going to track it up the neck. I'm scrolling superiorly here. You can follow my mouse. I'm on the common carotid artery here. We go through the neck and it should bifurcate. We can see a bifurcation there. It splits into two. Now posteriorly and medially is normally your internal carotid artery and this is our external carotid artery. So we're going to follow the internal carotid. Moving our way up the neck, it can have a bit of a tortuous course. You can see it going laterally here, coming in medially again and up towards the skull base. We can see we're at the level of the skull base here. It then goes into the petrous section of the temporal bone. Now if you haven't seen an anatomy lecture on our skull base foramina, that's a great one to go and have a look at because our carotid goes through a couple of those channels. We can see it then come anterior medially through the carotid canal up to the level of the foramen lacerum. It comes upwards before diving forward through our cavernous sinus. Here we can see our anterior clinoid processes and then the carotid wraps back round up towards the circle of Willis where it gives us our middle cerebral, our anterior cerebral artery and we can't see it here but our posterior communicating artery. So let's go all the way back down. Let's follow the right-hand side one. It's slightly different, obviously, because of this brachiocephalic trunk. So the brachiocephalic trunk should split into two. Let's watch it there. There, we split into two. This will be our right common carotid artery. This will be our right subclavian artery. Let's just make sure that this is the subclavian. It's going out towards the periphery there. Perfect. So let's follow our right common carotid artery. We work our way up the neck again. Keep following it, and there we go. We see a bifurcation, a split. External carotid artery, internal carotid artery. We follow that internal carotid artery upwards. Keep going up, keep going up. And we should see it now. We can see our two vertebral arteries here. We can see our common carotid coming towards the skull base. You see it jumps across left there a little bit, but that's fine. Up into the carotid canal, anterior medially, past the foramen lacerum. We come further upwards. And then we dive forward past or through the cavernous sinus, up past the anterior clinoids, coming backwards, splitting into our middle and anterior cerebral arteries. And we can just see our posterior communicating artery there. Now we can do a 3D reconstruction of this. So here we can see this is now the right-hand side of the patient, our brachiocephalic trunk, our right common carotid coming off it, then our internal carotid making its way up to the level of the carotid canal, we come anterior medially past the foramen lacerum up towards the level of the cavernous sinus. Now the artery is coming straight out towards us here. So I'm going to just keep my mouse at this level. So we maintain our level and just rotate it round. So we're at this level. We can see we've come through the petrous bone past the foramen lacerum up towards the cavernous sinus. Wrap round past the anterior clinoids and come over the top of the cavernous sinus there. And I want you to remember that loop there because where we are here is next to the cella turcica coming over and we, in that middle bit, got the pituitary gland there. And that's gonna really help us in naming some of the branches later. And then we come up and split into our anterior and middle cerebral arteries. So let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. I'm gonna switch over now to the MRA, the MR angiogram. 
And uh, let's look at it here. We're at the level of the circle of Willis here. The vasculature is, here is bright, our arteries are bright. And let's scroll um, down again to the neck. Let's see how far down the scan goes. So here we are, we can see our vertebral arteries here coming up next to our spinal cord. We can see our internal carotid arteries here. We've already bifurcated. And let's now name the segments of the internal carotid artery. So there's seven segments. I'm gonna list those segments here next to the video as we come across them. And if we have any branches coming off, I'm gonna tell you what those branches are. So the segment in the neck, after the bifurcation, all the way up to the opening of the carotid canal, that's what's known as the cervical section or C1. So let's follow that. This is all C1. Follow, 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 and here we can see it coming into the carotid canal. This is the opening of the carotid canal in the petrous section of the temporal bone. And this is the beginning of C2, or our petrous segment of the carotid artery. So the petrous segment runs through the carotid canal, comes anteriorly until we reach alpha ramen lacerum. This section that now comes upwards, that takes a little right angle out, is the lacerum segment and that is segment C3. So we follow that segment, we're going superiorly now, we can see our basilar artery here, and these are our, this is our lacerum, or lacerum segment C3 of the carotid artery, working our way up, and we now expect it to go forward into our cavernous sinus, which you can see it here, going forward. This is C4, the cavernous segment of the internal carotid. You can see then it, comes out anteriorly and goes upwards and posterior. So it loops around like we saw in that uh, CT reconstruction. And where that loop happens is the anterior clinoid process. And this segment is segment C5. It's called the clinoid segment, segment C5 of our internal carotid artery. So there we can see it coming in, coming around. This is C5. Then we're going to head back posteriorly the segment that starts to bend back posteriorly is called our ophthalmic division, C6, ophthalmic division, before heading upwards towards the circle of Willis and giving off our posterior communicating artery and bifurcating into our anterior and middle cerebral arteries. That last segment, C7, is what's known as the communicating segment of the internal carotid artery. Now, some of these segments have branches coming off them, and I'm going to head back down into the neck it's nice to remember because the even segments, C2, C4, and C6, they each have two branches coming off, and then C7 has a couple of its own branches. So let's go to segment C2, the petrous section. Here we are. Lateral to this is the tympanic membrane. So that's the first way to remember our first branch, which is a critico-tympanic branch. And then if you've watched the foramens video, uh, the skull base foramens, we see that there's an artery coming off. We can't actually see it on the scan, which is called the vidian artery, coming off through the vidian canal into the pterygopalatine fossa. Now, not everyone has this artery, but that is our second branch of C2, the vidian artery. Moving our way up, now we're in the lacerol section, C3. There's no branches of that. And we're going to head forward now into the cavernous sinus. This is C4. And we know that we have two branches coming off C4. Now, if you picture where we are, our pituitary gland, the inferior segment here of the pituitary gland, is medial to our cavernous sinus here. And then we know that we loop around superiorly later. So this first branch that comes off here is called the inferior hypophyseal artery. Hypophysis, our pituitary, is our inferior hypophyseal artery. And that su supplies the neurohypophysis, the posterior segment of our pituitary gland. Another branch that comes off here and goes into the cranial, anterior cranial fossa is our meningeal artery that supplies blood to the anterior meninges in the anterior cranial fossa. Then again, we loop our clinoid segment, C5. There's no branches off the clinoid. And we come around into our ophthalmic segment. Now, the ophthalmic segment, C6, that's also got two branches. And this is one branch that we should always see. It's the biggest branch that we have off the ICA and that is the ophthalmic artery. So let's see if we can see it here. We can see on the patient's left-hand side here, we can see the ophthalmic artery coming off. We can follow that ophthalmic artery through the optic canal heading into the orbit. And the same on the other side, we can follow. You can see the ophthalmic artery coming off the right here, heading through the optic canals into the right orbit there. The other artery that comes off C6, I said there were two, 
We now superior to the pituitary gland, and that is the superior hypophyseal artery. So our inferior hypophyseal artery is coming off our cavernous segment, and our superior hypophyseal artery is coming off our ophthalmic segment. And that is going to be supplying the anterior portion of our pituitary gland. So we can see now that we've followed this curve round. We're now in the ophthalmic segment, segment C6. We follow it round more. I'm looking on the right-hand side here. We can see that this branch is coming off now, the communicating segment, C7. We're giving our posterior communicating artery coming off. Another branch is given off here, and I'm listening to them on the side. You can always screenshot at the end to get all the branches uh, in one place. The anterior choroidal artery comes off here. Now that has a really wild course throughout the brain, but it, it goes down to the lateral geniculates of the thalamus and eventually heads all the way to the lateral ventricles and supplies the choroid plexus in the lateral ventricles, hence its name, the anterior choroidal uh, artery. And then we come up into the circle of Willis and we can see this bifurcation. We get the anterior cerebral coming off. We can actually see our anterior communicating artery linking both our anterior cerebrals and we get our middle cerebral artery coming off down the side here. Okay, so hopefully you can understand where those segments are. And a lot of people will learn this by learning a mnemonic and trying to remember the branches. And there's two different mnemonics, one for the ICA and one for the branches. And I find that a really inefficient way to learn. The better way for me to learn anyway is to picture it in my mind, see where the carotid uh, is actually running. You can start to think, okay, I'm going past the tympanic membrane, I'll supply here. I'm going past the hypothesis, I'm going to supply it there. I'm going past the ophthalmic, I'm supplying there. And it's much better in the long term to remember it that way, to actually understand why these things are called these things instead of trying to learn a mnemonic and then getting confused with all the mnemonics you have. And if you like doing this, if you like going through scans like this and really trying to apply your anatomical knowledge to name structures, then consider subscribing to this channel. This is the way that I describe it. I'm looking at the actual images. We can see these vessels in context with all the other anatomy around it. Instead of looking at a diagram in a textbook where everything's been stripped away and we only have our artery, it's much more difficult then to try and see where these segments fall in. Now, before we go, there's one more way we can assess the internal carotid artery or the arteries in the, in the brain. And this is often done when we have suspected subarachnoid hemorrhage or an aneurysm in the brain. And that's what's known as digital subtraction and geography or a DSA. I'm going to show you what it looks like. These are beautiful images. I'm going to go straight to where we're taking our image. What I want to do is start at our initial image, show you how to read these quickly. We can see almost this indentation. It almost looks like embossed paper. You can see the skull coming around here, our anterior cranial fossa or our roof of our orbits here, cella tersica here, as well as our temporal bone coming here. So we kind of know where we are. Anterior here, these are facial bones, and this is the occipital bone back here. So let's now be giving contrast. We can see this first segment coming in is the last portion of our uh, cervical segment, C1. Then we're going through the petrous bone. This is C2 coming up past the foramen lacerum into the lacerum section, segment three, C3, diving forward into the cavernous sinus. This is our cavernous C4 segment. We can see that this, if I go back, this is our cella tersica. It's got our pituitary sitting in there. So we're coming right past that, coming up past the anterior clinoids, C5, our clinoid, backwards, giving off our ophthalmic artery, C6, ophthalmic, and then rising up into the circle of Willis here, our communicating segment, giving our anterior and middle cerebral arteries coming off. So it's a fairly complicated artery. It goes a lot of places. It sends off a lot of branches, but these are all critically important clinically, especially when you are assessing for uh, atherosclerosis in the ICA or any signs of acute thrombus or stroke. And again, you can follow the caliber of these arteries and actually see if you can see any aneurysms forming. So I hope that helped. Again, if you like learning like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know what other anatomical structures you want me to discuss next. And until next time, goodbye, everybody.